Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about monkeypox. Just when you thought you'd heard the last of weird viruses, now monkeypox has made headlines over the last few weeks. But is this something that you need to worry about? And what exactly is monkeypox anyway? Monkeypox is an orthopox virus that was first isolated from a colony of sick monkeys in the 1950s. It's similar to variola, which is a virus that causes the now eradicated smallpox. But monkeypox has been endemic, meaning that small ongoing pockets of infection have been seen in areas of, of Africa for years. But over the last few weeks, outbreaks of infection have been found outside of Africa in countries like Europe and the United States. Monkeypox is typically acquired through contact with an infected animal, usually through a bite. But human to human transmission has been known to occur in the past, and this is what's happening now during this outbreak. The transmission between humans is through large respiratory droplets or close contact with infected skin lesions. So this virus is way more difficult to contract than the virus that causes COVID-19 and shouldn't evoke the same amount of concern or fear. To contract monkeypox, you need to spend hours with someone face to face or share saliva or a bed with someone that has open sores or have unprotected sex with them. At this point, we don't think people can spread monkeypox unless they have symptoms, but we're not sure if the virus can be spread through semen or vaginal fluids. A person infected with monkeypox typically has a rash and fever, chills, enlarged lymph nodes, headaches, and body aches. And the rash tends to be located on the face, hands, and feet, and the genital areas. The rash begins with small bumps that then turn into pustules that then crust over and then fall off and may remind y'all of the appearance of chickenpox. It's the material inside the pustules that can spread the disease. Most patients have a mild illness that resolves on its own, but for patients that are at greater risk for more severe disease, there are some antiviral medications that need to be given in the hospital. Those at greater risk include children younger than eight years old and patients that are immunocompromised because of things like advanced HIV, leukemia, or lymphoma. And there's already an FDA-approved vaccine for the prevention of monkeypox that can be used in high-risk populations if necessary. Most infections have occurred in men between the ages of 20 and 50 years of age, and none of those infected in the United States have died. In Africa, the mortality rate is about 10% of those that contract the illness, but this is likely due to poor access to healthcare and not necessarily that, that the infection is more serious. What's really interesting is that people that received a small PAX vaccine in the past likely have some amount of immunity against monkeypox, since the virus that causes monkeypox is similar to the virus that causes smallpox. The last vaccinations against smallpox were globally about 40 years ago, but that's likely why the age group that became infected with smallpox are between the ages of 20 to 50, since they were likely never inoculated against smallpox in the past. The risk to the general public is very low at this point, but scientists are watching closely to see if this particular strain of monkeypox has developed the ability to spread more easily from person to person. However, unlike SARS-CoV-2, which is an RNA virus, monkeypox is a DNA virus, and DNA viruses don't tend to mutate as quickly or as often as RNA viruses. An example is that smallpox was eradicated from the globe with one vaccine, Multiple forms of the vaccine were not needed to fight different variants, so that's reassuring. At the end of the day, this likely will simply fade into the background as other more urgent health issues arise. Thanks for joining me.